The readings will now be given by Mishaela from Canada. I will read from the Bible. Psalm Praise waiteth for thee, O God, in Zion, and unto thee shall the vow be performed. O thou that hearest prayer, unto thee shall all flesh come. Iniquities prevail against me, as for our transgressions, thou shalt purge them away. Blessed is the man whom thou choosest and causest to, ap to approach unto thee, that he may dwell in thy court. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of thy house, even of the holy temple. By terrible things in righteousness wilt thou answer us, O God of our salvation, who art the confidence of all the ends of the earth and of them that are afar off upon the seas, with which by his strength setteth fast the mountains, being girded with power, which stilleth the noise of the sea, the noise of their ways, and the tumult of the people. Matthew And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, he was afterward and hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city, and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple, and saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, Cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give the angels charge concerning thee, and in their hand they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord. Thy God. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them, and saith unto him, All these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. James Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life. X. And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, 
ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his siege until midnight. And there were many lights in the upper chamber, where they were gathered together. And there sat in a window a certain young man named Eutychus, being fallen into a deep sleep. And as Paul was long preaching, he sunk down with sleep and fell down from the third loft and was taken up dead. And Paul went down and fell on him and embracing him said, Trouble not yourself, for his life is in him. When he therefore was come up again, and had broken bread, and eaten, and talked a long while, even till break of day, so he departed. And they brought the young man alive, and were not little comforted. Philippians being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. I will now read correlative passages from Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures and Pulpit and Press, both by Mary Baker Eddy. Who lives in good, lives also in God, lives in life, through all space. His is an individual kingdom, his diadem a crown of crowns. His existence is deathless forever unfolding its eternal principle. Wait patiently on illimitable love, the Lord and giver of life. Reflect this life, and with it cometh the full power of being. The confidence inspired by science lies in the fact that truth is real, and error is unreal. Error is a coward before truth. Divine science insists that time will prove all this. Both truth and error have come nearer than ever before to the apprehension of mortals, and truth will become still clearer as error is self-destroyed. When we come to have more faith in the truth of being than we have in error, more faith in spirit than in matter, more faith in living than in dying, more faith in God than in man, then no material superstition can prevent us from healing the sick and destroying error. Suffering is no less a mental condition than is enjoyment. You cause bodily suffering and increase them by admitting their reality and continuance as directly as you enhance your choice by believing them to be real and continuous. When an accident happens, you think or exclaim, I am hurt. Your thought is more powerful than your words, more powerful than the accident itself to make the injury real. Now reverse the process. Declare that you are not hurt and understand the reason why. And you will find the ensuing good effects to be in exact 
disproportion to your disbelief in physics and your fidelity to divine metaphysics, confidence in God as all, which the scriptures declare him to be. Our surety is in our confidence that we are indeed dwellers in truth and love, man's eternal mansion. Such a heavenly assurance ends all warfare and bids tumult cease. For the good fight we have waged is over. And divine love gives us the true sense of victory. They shall abundantly satisfied with the fatness of thy house, and thou shalt make them drink of the river of thy pleasure. No longer are we the church militant, but of the church triumphant. And with Job of old we exclaim, Yet in my flesh shall I see God. The river of his pleasures is a tributary of divine love, whose living waters have their source in God and flow into everlasting life. We drink of this river when all human desires are quenched, satisfied with what is pleasing to the divine mind. Perchance some one of you may say, the evidence of spiritual verity in me is so small that I am afraid. I feel so far from victory over the flesh that to reach out for a present realization of my hope favors of temerity. Because of my own unfitness for such a spiritual animal, my strength is not and my faith fails. O oh, thou weak and infirm of purpose, Jesus said, be not afraid. What if the little rain should say, so small a drop as I can never refresh a trooping earth, I'll tarry in the sky. Is not man metaphysically and mathematically number one, a unit, and therefore whole number, governed and protected by his divine principle, God, you have simply to preserve a scientific positive sense of unity with your divine source, and daily demonstrate this. Then you will find that one is as important a factor as duodecillions in being and doing right, and thus demonstrating the basic principle. A dewdrop reflects the sun. Each of Christ's little ones reflects the infinite one, and therefore is the seer's declaration true that one on God's side is a majority? A single drop of water may help to hide the stars or crown the tree with blossom. When the illusion of sickness or sin tempts you, cling steadfastly to God and his idea. Allow nothing but his likeness to abide in your thought. Let neither fear nor doubt overshadow your clear sense and calm trust that the recognition of life harmonious 
as life eternally is, can destroy any painful sense of or belief in that which life is not. Let Christian science, instead of corporeal sense, support your understanding of being. And this understanding will supplant error with truth, replace mortality with immortality, and silence discord with harmony.